Hey everybody. So the next thing I wanted to go over again was the ideal of layering shaders. In particular, the Mental Ray Architectural Shader, which is probably your go-to shader when you're working um, in Mental Ray and you really want a physically accurate look. Okay, let's take a look at this scene real quick. It's really, really simple. What I want to simulate, and I'll turn off my textures for a minute, is the type of reflections you would get if you were, um, um, or a layered material on windows, let's say in one of your Diagon Alley. Let's say you were gonna be putting a logo on a window, how we might go about doing something like that. Alrighty, so what I have here is uh, just a background image and I built out a really small, really simple window frame. Nothing particularly exciting about that. And all I did was grab the polygons that represent the windows and extracted them. Okay, so that should be pretty straightforward by now. If it isn't, uh, that would be very, very sad. Uh, but at this point, all I have on them is a simple checkered texture. It's actually the same texture on each one of these windows. Um, what I'd like to do is show you a couple of the considerations that you could have. Um, so let's go back to the dual view so I could open up the hyper shade. Um, in here, here is the Lambert width that we're looking at. Nothing particularly exciting about that. Um, it's just a Lambert texture I'm using in the background. Here I have a Mental Ray uh, Material X shader. It's the default for uh, thin glass, so if I went to glass thin and just hit that, you would get the exact same thing. What I'm going to do temporarily is I'm going to stick it on each one of these windows, so you can get a look at it. Okay, just like this. Alright, and um, let's bring up the render window and take a peek at that. Nothing particularly exciting again. It's got a mild blue hint. You can see that from the refraction over here. Um, and we pick up a mild blue hint in the refraction. Okay, so let's just remove everything from before and save that. Get this out of our way. What I'd like to do on this last window is I'd like to put a butcher's logo. I downloaded an image from the internet and I just saved it with an alpha. It didn't originally have an alpha. So what I did was I went into Photoshop and let's see if it's still here, the Atomic Butcher, okay? And what I did was, it was a JPEG file, so I just um, duplicated one of the channels, and I gave it an alpha, all right? So nothing particularly exciting about that either, all right? So let me just close that out, and we don't need to save that. So uh, what I'll do is, I'm going to bring down my my material X, which is my glass. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Let's call it glass. Okay. I'm going to create a second one, which is going to be material X, and I am going to call this logo. A logo. Alrighty. Into this, I am going to pump my logo. So I'm going to go to file. Find my file and the Atomic Butcher, that was the JPEG, this is the TGA that I created, and I'll pop that into there. So here's my logo, and if we go back out for one second, we can see that uh, it's in the color channel. And if I take this material now and I dump it onto this last window, um, we get a result, but probably not the result you would want. get this. The reason you get this, and one of the things we noticed when we did the texturing that apartment window scene was that for Maya materials, a Maya material would pick up that this had an alpha channel and pipe the alpha into the transparency. Um, the metal ray texture is not quite as bright as that, so you're going to have to do that manually. So let me save that for a second and hide it. And it's in a strange place. Here is the MIA material. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we are going to go under advanced. Hide the bump. We don't need bump. But under the advanced tab, we're going to see cutout opacity down here. And the cutout opacity is where we're going to want to put our file. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the exact same file 
and I'm going to drag it right here into the cutout opacity. All right, and now we'll bring this up and we'll look at that render again. Okay, so now we have the cutout and that looks pretty good. So that's all right. The only thing is it's tremendously stretched and uh, probably not as big. We don't really probably want it that big. So you might be wondering exactly how we're going to go out doing that. Well, now we're going to go back into the old ideal of edit UVs. What I did was I, when I created these, each one of these I created, I basically um, selected its polygons and I unitized it so it takes up the entire space, which is the case for this window, which is probably not the case that I want. So what I'm going to do is go into UVs, grab this entire thing, let's grab the smoothie and unfold this into the shape of the actual window. Well, now we're getting some tiling in here and it's not quite big enough and that's probably not what I want either. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and scale this. So it sits in the window approximately where I want it. Something like that, let's say. It looks about right. Make sure it's going to be round over here. And you're seeing this terrible tiling, but that's okay. We can take care of the tiling issue. Um, window should be about the right size, so I'm done in the editor. What I will do now is I'm going to go into the file texture, I'm going to go into its placement node, and I'm going to shut off its wrapping. By doing that, it just places it here in the center. Okay, so let's take a peek at this. All right, that's looking pretty good, but the next thing we see here is we got this odd graying on the glass, all right? Um, what you're getting there is if you go to the actual surface shader and we look at what's going on in the color channel, if we can actually find it, um, under color balance, we have a default color, which is gray, and that's not helping our situation. All right, just to show you what would happen, we could make this orange and you can see it there. Uh, so immediately, I would imagine you realize what we have to do. We want to turn this down to black. Black means invisible, so we don't see it. So again, we'll hit the button. And now we're looking pretty good. So our atomic butcher is showing up in the window. Uh, but this is just this logo material at this point. You'll notice that we have the blue of the glass and that's not showing up in here. So the next step is going to be uh, to combine these two shaders so that um, we have a compound shader. Okay, so if you guys remember from class, the trick of this was that uh, by default, MIA materials won't combine. So what we need to do is kind of trick Maya into taking this. So what we'll do is we'll line these two guys up. We'll go into the utilities bin, or uh, and let's see what we're going to pull out of here. Actually, we're going to go up to surfaces, and we're going to grab two surface shaders. All right, I'm going to grab one for this and one for this. So I'm going to take the MIA glass, and I'm going to pipe it into the out color. And this will open this up. And we got the glass on this side, you can see, and you got the surface shader on this side. So we'll scroll down the glass until we find the result, which is what the glass looks like. And we're going to pipe that into the out color. All right. Over here, we have the logo texture and this surface shader. So we'll just grab this logo and we'll pipe it right into the out color. And again, We'll scroll down until we find the result. We're going to pipe that into the out color. Okay. I noticed today this gives you this insane looking sort of a thing, but believe me, it's okay. Next, we're going to go into other textures, grab a nice layered texture. All right. And the beauty of this setup is this is actually going to be the glass. And I'll get rid of the default one that's set in there. And this will be the logo. Okay, so let me just put the glass behind the logo because that will make more sense. 
And now this looks insane, but it's actually quite right. And uh, all we need now is one more surface shader. So we'll go back up to Maya and we'll grab a surface shader, which is going to be right here. And we'll take this last layer texture and we'll pipe it into the out color. All right. So let's just grab all of this for a second and graph this so you can see it. So here's our actual shader. This is going to be our class with the logo on it. Okay. So why don't we take this surface shader and dump it right over there, put it on that, and we will open our render window. Save that render, and we'll hit the button. And so we render, and you might say, well, wait a second, this isn't quite working yet, because I just see the logo. We're not getting that nice bit of blue glass, and you would be correct. But if you guys remember how the layer texture works, um, it has an alpha, and the alpha is what separates the background from the foreground. And the only alpha that we need at this time is going to be provided by this image. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to cut out this image from the background, and then that's how we're going to pull this off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this file and I'm going to pipe it into the alpha channel right here. Okay. And if we do that, in theory, we get that, which is our nice bluish glass with the logo right there on it. So once again, let's just clean up the old shader and we'll take a peek just so that you can, um, wrap your head around this again. So the glass is really easy. The glass is a simple surface shader with the MIA architectural material piped into it. Okay. We take a layer texture node and that this surface shader gives us the ability to pipe that directly in. Down here we have another MIA material and into the color slot we piped this map. Okay. Also, into this map, we piped, or into this material, in the Advanced tab, we piped that map into the cutout opacity, and that gave us the cutout for this, okay? Once we had this material set up, we just piped it into the out color of a surface shader, which then allowed us to take that and dump it into the Layer Texture node. So now this basically is just a texture map with a mix of these two, we pipe it into an empty surface shader. We're just using that as a conduit. So now this becomes our actual, um, if we were going to name it, glass with logo texture. All right. Actually, that would be. This is the uh, this is the shader. This is the actual texture on it. The only thing we needed to do uh, additionally was to grab that map, which is the cutout for the logo, and use that as the alpha on the layer texture. And that is how we got, um, in this case, a logo onto our glass, or if you had a window and you wanted a splat of blood or something of that nature. The only thing you need to rec recall and remember, though, was that the um, UV coordinates of that, and it looks disastrous again, but you get the basic ideal of it here, is uh, we size that so that it would fit in the window in the right place. I have my UV coordinates really big here, but that's okay because we're not getting any tiling because we turned off tiling for this file in here. So we turned off all the wrapping or anything like that. So that gives us the ability to place this logo wherever we want. We could have put it higher, lower, made it smaller. Um, if I needed this logo to be much smaller on the glass, all I would do is grab the UV coordinates and I can make this window much bigger and move these down something like that. So this might be, let's say, further up in the window and much smaller in the center. So if I re-render this now, um, my logo should be smaller and a little bit higher up in the window. There you go. And that was basically the difference of doing that.
Okay? Hopefully this helped. I know that's kind of complex. You might want to run through it more than once, but um, I think you should be able to get the hang of it. Take care. Bye-bye.